Science advances one funeral at a time. It is not the possession of truth, but the success which attends the seeking after it, that enriches the seeker and brings happiness to him. Science cannot solve the ultimate mystery of nature, and that is because, in the last analysis, we ourselves are a part of the mystery that we are trying to solve. We have no right to assume that any physical laws exist, or if they have existed up until now, that they will continue to exist in a similar manner in the future. There can never be any real opposition between religion and science, for the one is the complement of the other. Every serious and reflective person realizes, I think that the religious element in his nature must be recognized and cultivated if all the powers of the human soul are to act together in perfect balance and harmony. And indeed, it was not by accident that the greatest thinkers of all ages were deeply religious souls. Insight must precede application. The pioneer scientist must have a vivid, intuitive imagination, for new ideas are not generated by deduction, but by artistically creative imagination. If you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. A new scientific truth does not triumph by convincing its opponents and making them see the light, but rather because its opponents eventually die and a new generation grows up that is familiar with it. An experiment is a question which science poses to nature, and a measurement is the recording of nature's answer. I regard consciousness as fundamental. I regard matter as derivative from consciousness. We cannot get behind consciousness. Everything that we talk about, everything that we regard as existing, postulates consciousness. New scientific ideas never spring from a communal body, however organized, but rather from the head of an individually inspired researcher who struggles with his problems in lonely thought and unites all his thought on one single point which is his whole world for the moment. Experiment is the only means of knowledge at our disposal. Everything else is poetry, imagination. The assumption of an absolute determinism is the essential foundation of every scientific inquiry. Anybody who has been seriously engaged in scientific work of any kind realizes that over the entrance to the gates of the Temple of Science are written the words, Ye must have faith. This is one of man's oldest riddles. How can the independence of human volition be harmonized with the fact that we are integral parts of a universe which is subject to the rigid order of nature's laws. 
The man who cannot occasionally imagine events and conditions of existence that are contrary to the casual principle as he knows it will never enrich his science by the addition of a new idea. Science enhances the moral value of life because it furthers a love of truth and reverence. Love of truth displaying itself in the constant endeavor to arrive at a more exact knowledge of the world of mind and matter around us, and reverence because every advance in knowledge brings us face to face with the mystery of our own being. The highest court is in the end one's own conscience and conviction. That goes for you and for Einstein and every other physicist. And before any science there is first of all belief. We cannot rest and sit down lest we rust and decay. Health is maintained only through work. And as it is with all life, so it is with science. We are always struggling from the relative to the absolute. Science means unresting endeavor and continually progressing development toward an aim which the poetic intuition may apprehend, but the intellect can never fully grasp. The theory of relativity confers an absolute meaning on a magnitude which in classical theory has only a relative significance, the velocity of light. The velocity of light is to the theory of relativity as the elementary quantum of action is to the quantum theory. It is its absolute core. The goal is nothing other than the coherence and completeness of the system, not only in respect of all details, but also in respect of all physicists of all places, all times, all peoples, and all cultures. No burden is so heavy for a man to bear as a succession of happy days. I had always looked upon the search for the absolute as the noblest and most worthwhile task of science. As a man who has devoted his whole life to the most clear-headed science, to the study of matter, I can tell you as a result of my research about the atoms this much. There is no matter as such. All matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force which brings the particles of an atom to vibration and holds this most minute solar system of the atom together. We must assume behind this force the existence of a conscious and intelligent mind. This mind is the matrix of all matter.